Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Varun Tahin. So as you guys know that we have started with statistics in the previous video and that probability is the core for it. If you haven't gone through it yet, I would recommend you to see that one first as that will be the basis of the upcoming sessions as well. In today's session, we will dive deeper with the probability in terms of additional rules of probability. We will also see some examples and problems like we did before to get more clarity over each concept or rule. Now there are certain rules in probability. So there is this first rule of addition. So we'll just understand that by an example. Okay. So there is an experiment which we are conducting, which says a single sided die is rolled and we have to find the probability of rolling a two or a five. So as you know, the sides of dice can have six numbers. Okay. Each written in several sides. So this is one, two, three, four, five and six okay while we roll the dice either side can come at the surface or at the top okay so there can be several cases and each one have a probability of one by six as we have already seen while we roll a dice and we expect a number to come let's say we are expecting two to come so it will have one out of six probability because there are total of six numbers in a die and we are expecting two to come. So the same way for one also one by six and for others also it will be one by six only. Now we have to find the probability of rolling two or a five. So in this case we are either expecting two or a five to come in a single roll of a dice. So ideally from our experience and from common logic we can conclude that it should be a sum of both of these probabilities that is sum of the probability of getting two which is one by six and getting five which is also one by six. So this should ideally be two by six which is one by three. So we will verify this with the rule of addition in probability. So the addition rule states that when two events A and B are mutually exclusive, the probability of A or B to occur is the sum of probability of each event. In short, it is saying that probability of A or B will be a sum of probability of A plus probability of B. Now we'll see the meaning of mutually exclusive. So this term is usually used when the event is happening only once. Now let's look at this example again. Okay. So here it says that the single sided die is rolled and the probability of rolling a two or a five, we have to find that. Now in this example, a single sided die is rolled. So this is a single event and we can either have one to six numbers. So a single number is obtained at the end when we roll a die. So these are called as mutually exclusive event because they cannot occur at the same time. Okay. Either we can get a two or a five, but we cannot get both. Also the occurrence of one number is not affecting the occurrence of another number. So this is mutually exclusive. So this is what addition rule also states over here that it works for only mutually exclusive events. And what will it do for finding the result of the events? We have to sum up the probabilities of each of the individual events. Now we can also tally this via summing up all the probabilities. Let's say that we encounter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 okay of roll of a die in each of the event. Let's say this is event 1, this is event 2, this is event 3, this is event 4, this is 5 and this is 6 okay. Now by this rule we have to sum up all the probabilities. So 1 by 6 into 6 because each one has 1 by 6 as the probabilities and when we sum it up it will come up to 1 which is a certain event or a 100% probability. So by common sense also we can tell that either of the numbers will come while rolling of a die and that is the reason this will have a result of 1 because we can get numbers anything between 1 to 6. Now the addition rule 2 of probability says that when two events A and B are mutually exclusive the probability A or B to occur is the sum of their individual probability minus the probability of their intersection. Okay. So in short, what it is saying is that the probability of A or B in the event of mutually exclusion. Okay. So this is mutually exclusion will be probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. 
okay so you can also write this as a intersection b now we'll understand this with the help of example now let's say that in a maths class of 30 students 17 are boys and 13 are girls okay and they conduct a unit test where four boys get a grade and five girls get a grade and now we have to find what is the probability of choosing a girl or an a grade student okay so how to go about solving this problem is we will identify pa okay which is a grade student and how many are there among 30 there are only 4 plus 5 that is 9 students which got A grade. Then there is P of B which is girl student. So what will be number here? It will be 13 out of 30. Okay. So we are only finding the girl student. So there are only 13 out of the 30 students irrespective of the grades we are talking about. Okay. So these all components are calculated now and what is left is this component which is P, A and B. So P, A and B will signify the girl student who has got A grade in the class and who are only 5 here you can see. So out of 30 only 5 girls have got A grade. Now we will fit this equation here. So P, A or B which is girl or an A grade student is equal to 9 by 30 which is P of A plus 13 by 30 which is P of B minus 5 by 30. So this comes up to 17 by 30 which is your answer. Now I will explain to you why we have applied this rule to this experiment. The reason is there can be girls with an other grade also and there are girls with an A grade also and what we are doing is we are finding the probability of choosing a girl or an A grade student. So there can be cases that both the probabilities can clash. So you can understand this via a Venn diagram. So you can consider a circle A which is a grade student then there is another circle which is B which is just a girl student okay so PB is a girl student BA is a A grade student probability and there is this intersection which you can see in the middle who represent girls with A grade so this is just the girls this is just A grade students and these are girls with A grade so these are not mutually exclusive or you can say that this portion is inclusive of the probabilities which we calculate so that is the reason we will calculate the probability of A in the equation which is this then add the probability of B to it and then we already have this portion twice okay once in A and the other time in B. So what we'll do is we will minus the portion of intersection one time so that we'll get A or B. Okay. So that is the reason we have come up with this equation which fits this solution. Let's see one more experiment. So it says on a new year's eve probability of a person having car accident is 0.09. Probability of a person driving while intoxicated is 0.32 and probability of a person having a car accident while intoxicated is 0.15. Now we have to find what is the probability of a person driving while intoxicated or having an accident. So this experiment is same as the previous one okay where we have the two circles and we have probability of A and probability of B and this is calculated twice so we will subtract the probability of A and B. So that we have probability of A or B. Okay. So in this case, probability of A is person having car accident, which is 0 0.09. Probability of B is probability of a person driving while intoxicated, which is 0 0.32. The probability of a person having a car accident while intoxicated is P and B, which is 0 0.15. Okay. So when you do this calculation, it will come up to 0 0.41 minus 0 0.15 which is 0 0.26. So this is the probability of a person driving while intoxicated or having an accident. Now guys before moving on to the other rule which is a multiplication rule we have to understand the meaning of an independent event. So an independent event refers to two events A and B okay which will be independent if the fact that A occurs does not affect the probability of B occurring. So if A does not interfere in the probability of B then those two are independent events. And the examples of independent event you can see on screen is landing on heads after tossing a coin 
and rolling a five on a single sided die. So these two events are completely independent events or unrelated events you can say. Therefore they will not have effect on each other. And you can see the second and the third example as well which is choosing a three from a deck of cards and replacing it and then choosing an ace as a second card. So these are also independent event because it is getting replaced and the second time you will have the same number of cards as you had in first and you have equal chances of picking any card. Then the third is rolling a four on a dice and then rolling a two on the second chance. Okay and now comes the multiplication rule which says when two events A and B are independent the probability of both occurring is PA into PB which is probability of A into probability of B that will represent P, A and B. Now let's understand this with the help of example or an experiment. Okay, let's say that there is a dresser drawer that contain one pairs of socks with each of the following colors such as blue, brown, red, white and black and each pair is folded together to match the set. Now you are reaching to the socks drawer and choosing pair of socks without looking at the first time and the second time you now replace this pair and choose another pair without looking. Now we need to calculate what is the probability that you will choose the red pairs of socks each time. Now we need to understand that in first attempt we are just choosing the socks okay it can be any socks among this five pair okay and then in the second attempt we are just replacing without looking okay. So we'll put that socks again here and then choose the pair which can be any other pair as well along with the pair we have selected at the first time itself. Okay, so this perfectly fits the multiplication rule which says that when two events A and B are independent the probability of both occurring is A and B. Why they are independent is because of the reason that the number of socks are remaining the same the second time also. So it does not affect the choice of ours the second time also as it did not in the first place itself okay so here we will calculate p a and b so the probability of a is 1 over 5 because there are 5 socks and we are choosing one and then the probability of b also remains the same because the number of socks remains the same the second time itself so this comes to 1 over 25 which is your answer so this was it for today guys these are comparatively short sessions as this is just to give you a glance over how probability works and from next session onwards we will have an introduction to the real statistical world by means of permutation combinations random variables and distributions please let me know how you are finding my content so far by commenting on the video please like share and subscribe this channel and its videos as i'll be coming out with more awesome content in few weeks that will interest you even more it gives me great pleasure in presenting you with all that i have currently please do take care of yourselves and your families i will see you soon in the next session until then thanks and take care <laughs>